Here we are once again with the Ninja Mobile Dart and since she was last seen that central divide has turned into a proper bulkhead splitting the driver compartment from the engine and uh, not surprisingly more triangles in case you're wondering why all this all of this horrible square tubing is being used it's, um, it's really just because it's easy to rivet panelling to so there'll be an aluminium floor and some aluminium panels enclosing the driver and uh, it's a lot easier to join them onto a, a lot tidier to join them onto a square tube than it is around and in there um, you can see the little uh, hoop above the with it will be the instrument panel and um, to stiffen up the hole where the driver's legs poke through big square hole there's a bit of steel 1.2 mil steel reinforcing around the edge and we've got some steering column brackets which we'll get to later and uh, there you have it that's the front part of the chassis pretty much done time to um, put on the rear bit so moving right along, the chassis has been turned around the other way so the back of it is closer to the welding machine and I've drawn the, the red part of the frame on the floor here and as you may, look at that, as you may recall from the drawing the back of the chassis is up at 8 degrees so we can put a diffuser under there but rather than um, build a little bit of jig at 8 degrees We'll do this. So there's the front half of the chassis tipped up at 8 degrees with a lump of wood up under the front of it so that the, uh, the back part ends up flat on the floor. And it begins like this. Left hand side. Right hand side. A little bit across the back. And carries on from there. So there's that lower rear frame tacked in place and uh, also a couple of almost longitudinal bits are actually off to the right at one degree because the final drive sits at one degree to the car centre line because uh, or 89 degrees to the car centre line because the angles across it the uh, engines angled across at one degree and um, you can see the little holes there in the back for the final drive mounting plates. And there it is up at 8 degrees. And that little diagonal is just tacked in there to hold it in place while I turn it upside down and weld underneath it. At this stage of the game, you're probably familiar with my fondness for sub-assemblies. Well here's one, that's the rearmost bulkhead. Um, I suppose, with the bottom wishbone and top wishbone brackets attached. It's a little bit of jig there. And those tube ends capped off. And that goes right at the tail end, like so. And here we have the top two tubes added to make the outside outline, if you like, of the back of the chaise. Unfortunately, by the time this is all finished, there'll be a big tangle of tubes in there to mount the um, the final drive, the top wishbone, the bottom wishbone and the shocks, but I guess that's the way it has to be. There we go. More tubes and more triangles. And that's one of the final drive mounting plates sitting in there, which we'll get to later. We're having a little change of plan here. At this stage, there was going to be a tube here to mount the forward leg of the rear wishbones. But I came to realise there's going to be a tube here as well to mount the engine. So in the interest of simplicity, I might as well take the wishbone all the way to there and eliminate that tube and a few other things to go with it. Uh, but to mount the engine, I need to put the final drive in. So um, we'll have a look at that next and uh, see how it all pans out. So here's the back axle final drive assembly which you need to put into the car to line the engine up 
And um, I'll start at the beginning, start at the outboard end. That you've already seen, that's the rear upright. Um, that has now got the, the wheel flange pressed into it. And with that, you may remember that's a Nissan N15 bearing hub assembly. So that's a Nissan N15 right hand drive shaft, which has the uh, handsome feature of being a hollow piece of steel instead of a solid piece of hardened steel, which means you can cut it and weld it. So that goes in there as you can imagine. So that's the outboard end. The inboard end, that's a Nissan N12 drive shaft, which we can put wherever we want there. And fortunately, the CV joint that goes on there is the same joint that goes on the inboard end of a Hyundai XL X2, which gives us the opportunity to do this. That's a spool, effectively. So, a bit of 3 inch 2 mil wall chrome oly tube, 4130 tube, and welded into each end of it is a Hyundai CV housing. Uh, and two flanges on there, one for a sprocket, drive sprocket like so, and one for a brake disc. Because it's because the rear wheels are locked together, one brake disc is enough for for both wheels. And then uh, it goes in the lathe, actually before these go on, and the outside of the CV housing gets turned down to 75 mil and two circuit grooves, so that we can use this nice little 75 by 95 by 10 bearing pressed into a bit of 10 mil plate, which goes on there. Um, there's a little motorbike brake caliper. Um, that swings back and forth, there's your chain adjustment. And the whole thing's very light and uh, compact and instant rear end. Here's the final drive sitting in place with the four mounting bolts fitted. Um, no disc brake because we don't need that just yet. But the sprocket's on there because we need the sprocket to determine the engine position and that whole unit you might be able to see is one degree to the right um, which it needs to be to put the engine in that hole over there. There's our little ZX10 engine ready to go in. Uh, the only things are not standard there. Those two plates I've popped on for mounting it in the chassis. And uh, got some long bolts and stuff that needs sorting out later on, but that'll do us for now. Now, because the engine weighs 64 kilos and the chassis currently lays, weighs 29 kilos, rather than put the engine in the chassis, we're going to put the chassis on the engine, hopefully, and we'll see if it fits. Bit bloody tight, Malcolm, but it's in. Here you can see I've got the final drive in place and a uh, handy 600mm rule tells us when we've got the engine in the right place, and that's, uh, that's spot on. So we'll weld it in there. Bit windy in here today, or outside here. Anyway, more sub assemblies. There's the right hand rear engine mount sitting in place with the two plates and this one is the left hand rear engine mount which pops in there and it includes the mounting brackets for the uh, rear, rear wishbones. It's discussed. 
to be welded in there. So with the two rearmost engine mountings in place, including wishbone brackets, and while the engine's sitting there in the right place, I might as well build the, um, the two forward engine mounts as well, bolted to the cylinder head. One there, like so. And one in there, like so. Here's the back part of the chassis pretty much finished. And we know we, we, know we love triangles, but um, just a triangle isn't enough. You actually need three of them to make a triangular prism. So there's one, two, three legs making a triangular prism to mount the rear damper where the spring load goes in here. Um, that makes a triangle. This one's a square, but we couldn't get right to that back corner because the drive shaft goes through there. And over on this side, uh, the bit across the top's missing. You would think there'd be one there, but the, uh, that's supported with the damper mount, which you'll see later on, otherwise the same. So that's the chassis pretty much done, apart from the spring damper mounts, front and rear, which are a bit complicated, as we'll see later. And um, obviously it needs a roll hoop. And the chassis, as we were looking at it, then weighs 31 kilos, which is okay. Still be under 35 by the time the roll hoop's on. And while I've got your attention, this arrived, Father Christmas brought me this, all the way from England, good fabrications. I haven't opened it yet, we can do that together. Can you tell what it is yet? Here's the big clue. That's pretty much a whole exhaust system, which we'll get to later. I stood the chassis up on its tail just to finish a bit of welding, so I thought I'd finish this video with that slightly unusual shot of the underside of the chassis. 